Good day, viewers. Today is an excellent day. We thank God for this day, and we know we really are in for something that God is going to show us through our lives. And um, one of the things that I know is that God speaks in the ordinariness of life. And as he speaks, he also shows us of who he is by the way he carries us through life. A celebration church, Johannesburg, we've been having a series um, called Against All Odds. So today, I'm privileged to be here and being in conversation in the pulse with none other than our little girl, who is such a dynamic woman of God. And I just want to say, Lina, welcome. And I'm, I'm sure that you have so much that you, you really want to, to tell us of where God has carried you. You know what, life is all these things that happen to us, but in all these things we know God is faithful. So as we begin, can I just ask you to open with a word of prayer? Thank you, Pastor Audrey. I'm very honored to be here to share my life story with everybody in, within Celebration Church, um, Johannesburg, and even everybody that is going to watch um, this uh, video. I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for such a time as this, oh God. You knew that uh, on this day I'll be seated here across uh, Pastor Audrey Maconi, um, talking about my life story, where I've come from and where I am today. Lord, I just want to thank you above all for your faithfulness, for your goodness. You have said in your word, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And I carry that uh, verse with me all the days of my life, that you will never forsake me nor leave me. And I just want to thank you even above all for your word, for your voice that continues to sustain us, even continues to sustain me in all the things that I've gone through, in all the situations that I've encountered in my life. And I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The fact that we are here this morning, it is because God has been good to you, Lina, and uh, we are just so excited to, to be sitting with you. You know, the first time I met Lina, there was that, this one thing that struck me. It's the way she carries herself, and above all, I then later discovered, because I'd already seen it, that she loves nice shoes. So, Lina, thank you for being that lady that always directs us in terms of shoe wearing. And uh, <laughs> So can you tell us more about shoes before we get into the session? Ooh. <laughs> Where do I start? Um, now, Pastor Audrey, you are letting out my secret mm -hmm. um, about how many shoes I have. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. It's just about my journey, how I loved dressing up as a young girl. Mm -hmm. I don't know where this, come, this came from, but I can tell you, my mother is not even so much into this dressing up uh, mm -hmm. thing, but I can tell you her young sister, mm -hmm. now there's so much to talk about, who got married in December. Mm -hmm. She's the one that actually inspired me to, about looking good, about looking after myself, about my love for dressing up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have memories of, even was, when I was growing up, is because I loved shopping, I remember my mom, at times it was just too much for her. She was um, running a small business and she didn't have time to take me shopping. And she used to have an Edgar's account back home in Zim. And um, eventually we got to an agreement where she, you know, she agreed that she would just write a letter for me to go to Edgar's. She would give me a, a what do you call it, a balance an amount to spend, and then she would write it on the letter, and I would go, I remember even as a 13, 14 year old, to go and find myself close to where, and I would buy this on her account just by myself. So I think from then on, I just 
uh, grew this love for shopping and even independently going and choosing clothes for myself from such a young age mm -hmm. up until now shopping is one of my best things to do when I'm not doing other things and I think that's the one thing that even we clicked with our pastor Audrey <laughs> She loves dressing up, you can see. She's looking good in that lime outfit. She, you know, she always comes up with this fashionable stuff. And that's the one thing actually that actually struck me about her the first time I met her. Wow. Thank you, Lina. Thank you for th that compliment. But, you know, I take after you. I've always said when I grow up, I'd love to be like you. Now who takes after who? <laughs> me or her? <laughs> oh, wow. Lina... Just tell us about yourself. You know, who is Lena? Just a bit about your background. All right, so um, uh, I'm this young lady, like you, you refer me. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up um, in a single parent home. Uh, I was raised by my mother, but I, I wouldn't say just by my mother. Actually, I was raised up by my mother's family. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, up to now, I even use um, my mother's uh, surname, and I'm actually proud to, to carry that surname because they raised me, they made me who I am. Um, my mother, from what I know, from the discussions that I've had with family, they separated from my dad, uh, I think, before I was actually born. And then in the midst of the relationship, she went back uh, I think like what most married couples do, they separate um, and then they are not sure whether this is it and she went back and this is how I was then conceived. Mm -hmm. But obviously when she was pregnant um, uh, with me, they had the same uh, disagreements and then she was sent back to her father's home before I was born. Mm -hmm. And then my grandfather then uh, took on the responsibility. And one of the things that I always hear, even from my mother's um, brothers, they say, my grandfather used to say, this child belongs in this home. Like this child is um, a Mkome child. Mm -hmm. Even though my dad's surname is Muchena. Yeah. So I only got to, to, to know my dad's family later on in my life. I had two siblings before me. Uh, that grew up with my dad but me on the other hand I was raised by my mom and I only my earliest memory of meeting up my dad was when I lost my eldest sister mm -hmm. and I think I was in I was probably 15 and I think that was my earliest memory of actually meeting my father when my sister was not well and eventually she passed on and then later on um, in life, um, that was when I was in high school, and then I went on to study at the University of Zimbabwe. I did a Bachelor of Business Studies in Computing Science, which ultimately then gave me the background to the profession that I have today. Uh, I work uh, uh, within a financial services um, industry for Standard Bank currently as a digital records um, manager and um, yes I've got so much to tell Wow thank you so much Lena you know what you you there's one thing that you pointed out that um, at the um, when we are about to be born that's when we had a financial uh, sorry a family breakdown but God is faithful when we look at you Lena you have it all together, I didn't even know that you could be saying something like this. And from your background, we can see that you are somebody who is very determined in everything that you do. I've watched you, I mean, we have shared a lot of information. And from that, I've seen that you are so determined. You know, you, you continue fighting even when it doesn't even make sense. So, growing up, you indicated that you lost a sister. And I'm so sorry about that. You know, losing a family member, and especially if it is a sibling, I think it's one thing that it's never meant to be. You know, when you grow up and you are, you are raised in a family, you think you'll be together forever. 
you know. So we even speak even now, the comfort of God that you'll be able um, to heal and God helps you through the journey of grief. That being said, you, you said something about being raised by a single parent. How has that shaped your life? When you look at your life, how has it shaped you in terms of what you do or how you live your life? I must say it has actually contributed a lot to who I am today. Um, like you mentioned, I'm very determined. It's because I saw how my mom was so determined. But it's not that as a young child you realize, mm -hmm. but it's lessons that you take without realizing it. I remember even from the family history, my mom was never employed formally. She was fortunate that um, her dad um, had a business. Um, her dad um, owned, um, I actually at times laugh about it because this is history that you then hear about, uh, about mm. from other people. Mm. He owned what they used to call then an eating house. But I think it's in present day code, it's a restaurant mm -hmm. in, in Highfield mm -hmm. mm. for those that know the say Baba Fifields and Zimbabwe. And uh, my mom being the eldest sibling, she was actually responsible and she was the one child that the father trusted in mm. assisting him running that business. Mm. So my mother then was the child that was not developed educationally but was entrepreneurial developed. Mm. Uh, she then learned uh, how to run a business. If her father was not there, she learned, she took on responsibilities from such a young age. So even when um, the marriage didn't work out, the father then said, come back home. And then she carried on assisting um, her father mm -hmm. in the business. And then uh, when they lost their parents, also at a young age, because I think my mom was in her 20s as, a year, as an elder sibling of uh, six children, mm -hmm. then she took on the responsibility to actually look after the family together with one of her brothers that I'm very close to. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the decisions that I was made then was um, because I was young and this, they, they had a family home back in, in Waterfalls in Harare. They needed to decide what to do and I remember the sibling that, that comes after my mother, she was she had a stable marriage and everything, so I was then sent to a, to a home mm -hmm. to live with them. Whilst my mother then settled and in her life um, that, uh, in Mutari. So mm -hmm. my, my, my grandfather also used to have another small business in Mutari, like in, wow. her, in his rural home, mm -hmm. like a shop. So then they made a, a decision that she would go and run uh, that business back in Mutari. But because I was so young, I think they saw it fit that I would go and uh, stay with my aunt for mm -hmm. the first two, three years before then I went back to stay with my mom. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with her, with my aunt for, for my first year of crash and then my grade one and grade mm -hmm. two before then uh, moving back to stay with my mom after she had settled. Mm -hmm. And the things that I learned from my mom she, she, up to now, she's hardworking. She, there was never a day, to be honest, that I had issues with school fees, even the time that I went to high school, mm -hmm. uh, to boarding school. She prioritized the right things in life. And for mm -hmm. her, it was education. For her, it was having a roof um, over our heads. For her, it was food. Mm -hmm. And up to now, I'm so amazed that there, as much as I grew up in a single had, had a uh, family, there was never a day that we had no food mm -hmm. in the home. She made sure there was food on the table. Mm -hmm. She used to do cross-border to Mozambique. She used to do, you know, all those things that you can think of that those uh, women back in the days would do go and buy and sell, go to Mozambique. I can tell you, I think she was even um, 
conned at some point in time. You know, she had gone to buy stock for a shop, and the con man, I'm, I'm not sure what happened, but when she came back home, I could see things were not the same. And then I was, as a young child, I would ask mm -hmm. her, so mm -hmm. what happened today? You came back and you didn't have, um, you don't have anything. And she explained to me how when she was contemplating on what to buy for the small shop that she used to run, two con men uh, came on to her and they actually conned her off the money that she had. Wow. Wow. But the one thing that I learned, it didn't stop her. The next day she would wake up and she would carry on. And there were a few times that a small shop that she ran would be robbed and to almost empty level. But guess what? That shop would be filled again. So she taught me that it doesn't matter what happens in life. You have to wake up, you have to rise again and face another day. Wow, wow, that's powerful. You know, from what Lina is saying, we are seeing here a single mom who single-handedly raised up her family, her children. And one of the things that happened to Lina from her narration of her life is that apart from just being raised by a mom, she also had the family support, which was there to support uh, in raising uh, the children. As Africans, we know it takes a village to raise a child, and here you are. I don't think you ever saw yourself being where you are right now, but the things that her mom to, uh, taught her is what are those, those are the things that have brought her this far. You know what, I, I can say to somebody today, probably it's not a parent that has abandoned you, probably you feel left alone or forsaken. But what I know is there's a God in heaven and he continues to watch over us. Just trust him, believe him, and he will actually take you through. And um, you said your mom, though was single, she was so determined and she made sure that you guys, you were well sheltered, you were educated, and you had enough food. Can I pose a question to somebody who may think, I can't make it anymore? If in those days, a single woman could do something for your family, I believe we are challenged to be able to do things for ourselves, even today. Even when the chips are down, let us pick ourselves, we have heard about how she, your mother, despite what she went through in terms of business, she did not give up. So we need to continue fighting. When, when there is a vision, you know, I don't think you will perish, but the lack of vision is what causes people to perish. Because the word of God is clear when it comes to vision. To say as long as you have a vision, you will not, the lack of vision causes us to perish. So I encourage each one of us to say, okay, what is it that I want to do in life? Dust yourself and say, I'm not taken out because I know God is faithful and is able to order my steps until I get my, to my destiny. So Lina, you then end up in university. Your mother is fighting for you as a family she, there is one time she even has to surrender you to her sibling so that you are taken care of. How did that make you feel as a child? Because you know, one of the things that happens is if you don't grow together with your siblings, we can have distance or we may not be able to relate. You know, how did that make you feel? I think uh, at that point in time, as a child, you don't read too much into situations unless if it's um, the conditions are not favorable. Mm. My aunt is like my second mom. Like mm. both my mom's sisters, they've played um, 
good roles in how I was raised. Like up to now, I call my aunt mom. I cannot even True. say aunt. Mm. She's mom to me. Mm. Even her husband is dad to me. Right. So that's how I was raised. Like that's how I felt um, welcome in that home. So I didn't read too much into even her own children. They're like my brothers I'm actually, and sisters. I'm actually very close to my aunt's um, kids mm -hmm. more than to my very own sister uh, yes it's because we I was raised with my aunt's kids and mm -hmm. then my sister was with my dad they would my, my sisters would come now and again but because people are not on the same page my my father and my mother there would be arguments over when she would get kids and everything so it wasn't always that we used to spend so much mm -hmm. time together mm -hmm. so I can say obviously that um, created um, some distance between me and my sister. Mm -hmm. And um, as for my mom as well, then when I joined her, I think she, she, she didn't take me as a child. Mm -hmm. She considered me like a grown up. That's how mm -hmm. I felt then. Like there were things now when I look back, I'm like, how would she have expected me to do this? Like I would literally help her to make financial decisions. Mm -hmm. Like if things were not going well, she would tell me that the shop is not doing well. What is it that we must do? You mm -hmm. know. So she used to confide in me. If I remember, even when my sister passed on, mm -hmm. she. So I went to boarding school. I went back to boarding school, mm -hmm. and I remember because of the things that were going on with her, she wrote me a letter, mm -hmm. expressing how she was feeling. So. I think she, she didn't consider me as a child. I never had that mother-child relationship with my mom. Mm -hmm. It was not like that. So I think that's what I can say, how it affected the relationship mm -hmm. uh, with my mother. But nevertheless, it's, it's a good relationship. It wow. molded me. Right. I became responsible. Mm -hmm. I became uh, a person that... Uh, makes I, I prioritize the right things i'm not mm -hmm. saying i'm perfect mm -hmm. but i've learned a lot from her wow i i pray one day i will be able to meet her she's such a strong woman you know <laughs> taking the family through and yeah that's that's something else wow we thank thank you mom in case one day you bump into this um discussion we really want to thank you and to our viewers out there Thank you for taking care of people that come through our way, whether it's family members or anybody that may pass through your path. Just being able to give them a shelter and loving people. One good thing that I know that ministers to people is just loving people. If you love people, I think that's the greatest gift you can give to anybody. Many people think material things are important. But I think just a sense of belonging, like you now felt, like you felt being part of your aunt's family, because they welcomed you. They did not distinguish between their own children and yourself. So growing up in such environments also make people to thrive. The question I may pose to us, especially to us as Christians or believers, is that will people thrive being under our wings. Can we say people are able to stand on our shoulders because we ministered to them by just loving them? At times you don't even have to give them money. I remember, now that you have said this, one of the things, greatest things that has happened in my, li in my life is that I had men of God around me and uh, women of God that loved me and um, Doc, in, in, including our children. They've loved us all our lives. And that has really ministered to us. They've loved us, they've taken us as their own children. And at times, I, there's no distinction between them and my own parents because of the way they've cared about us. So it is important to always love people. That being said, Lena, you then end up in South Africa, coming from Zimbabwe. Can you take us there? How did you end up in South Africa? All right. So before I get to 
moved to, to South Africa. Mm -hmm. I, I was in university and um, in university you have friends and I think one of the things that we used to do is socialize, we try uh, this uh, church, you try this. And I remember there used to be campus ministry mm -hmm. and um, from Celebration Church right. um, in Borodell. Then they were actually at Harry Magalis, mm -hmm. and they used to come. So once in a while we would visit, I uh, would go to campus ministry, and that's when I started uh, knowing about celebration. Then it was, hear the word. Hear the word, yes. Hear the word, mm -hmm. yes. And then we would go to church uh, once in a while, not all the time. Mm -hmm. And I must say, then there was a transition from Harry Magalis to Celebration, to celebration Church. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that actually amazed me, I missed the point that the transition happened, but I remember then being in Celebration Church Borodil, and I'm thinking, wow, this building is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love this church, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that ministered to me in that uh, ministry was actually how people would, would give their testimonies and to say, I did this because of God. So I actually wanted to know who this God was. I was like, mm -hmm. I want to know uh, this God. I, like even now as I'm looking at um, these values, like a standard of excellence, you know, people that used to talk about those things, I was always a curious child as well. I was always um, that child that wanted to do the best. So I was like, standard of excellence? And even the standard of excellence that I see in this building, I want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. So then I was in university and then celebration uh, ministry became my church. Mm -hmm. And it also became my family and mm -hmm. it actually explains wh why I'm here and I'm saying this testimony. I need to encourage someone, I need to minister to someone just the same way I was ministered to when I was in celebration church in, in Borodell. And then after school, um, after university. Sorry, let's stay there for a while. Mm -hmm. you, you started coming to church, just like you, in Greek, they call it parea. In other words, you, you just wanted to have fellowship with other kids, and so you just came to church. And then at which point did you give your life to Jesus? So, it was um, when I was going through to Celebration uh, Church. I'm not sure whether it was now Celebration or it was still here, the word. Mm -hmm. But um, I also went through challenges. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember then it was to do with family. Mm -hmm. um, I won't mention names, but it was in the extended family. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like there was some spirit of rejection. and. The good thing is celebration puts all these um, uh, yes, mm -hmm. these courses mm -hmm. for us. And I remember, I think it was walking free mm -hmm. in those days because I thought I was going through a lot then. Um, I think it was after university now when I'm looking for a job and I was struggling to find a job. And there was, um, at some point when there was talk about walking mm -hmm. free, and I thought, you know what, let me go to this um, walking free. And this is when I was actually taught about things like rejection. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that these issues, mm -hmm. if you don't deal with them, they actually impact our life. Mm -hmm. They actually unpacked, and then this is when I realized even that rejection that I'd suffered from my father, it actually, it actually affects you. Mm -hmm. But thank God that at that point in time, I made a decision to deal with those issues. Mm -hmm. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I remember walking free used to be done. I think, if I'm not mistaken, service would end at 11 and walking free would happen right. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I, one of my friends who was training to be a doctor then used to stay in town. So I would go and stay uh, by a place in town and come back mm -hmm. for walking free. And it was through that journey that I managed to deal with some of the issues that I felt were obstacles in the path that I was actually walking with God. 
Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for that. You know what, a celebration, indeed, we have so many platforms. The table is laid and it's up to you as an individual to invest in your spiritual life because, I mean, we have quite a whole lot of stuff, you know, that spiritually can feed your soul, your mind, even your body. So it is important for you to, to keep abreast with what's happening in the church. But apart from that, even if you need prayer for anything, don't walk alone, don't struggle. We have platforms or courses that will help us deal with the issues of life. Because imagine if you had not dealt with the issue of rejection. You know, right now, we may not actually be sitting. Because when you feel, um, when you go through rejection, and especially the rejection does not even come from um, when you are older. It may start from when you are very young. I can testify to that or attest to that. I also am a child out of, um, who went through something like that. I was raised by a single mom, and I know what it means to be raised by a single mom as well as being raised by the extended family. But the good thing is God has a way of ministering to us. You know, it, I, cannot rem, I cannot say at some point in my life I felt that emptiness, though that spirit of rejection was there. But my family was there to support me all the way out. My mother's sisters, their children, and at times, you know, like you said, growing up, I didn't even know which mom was which mom, you know, because they were all my moms, they were all my sisters, they were all my brothers. But what I'm just trying to say is God has everything in control. It doesn't make sense now, but later, definitely it will make sense as long as we allow him to be in control. Thank you for sharing that part of your life. Yes, you can proceed. Where was I, Pastor? We are talking about you moving to South Africa. Oh, yes. yes. And then um, after university, um, I struggled to find a job. I had done internship at Kingdom Bank. Mm -hmm. And I then after finishing my degree, they wouldn't take me back. And um, I wondered what was going on. You were growing up, and obviously, then even within family that you, you, you're staying with, then people start talking, maybe you, you, you're not doing well enough, you know, at that job, or maybe, you know, there, there's so many things that people then talk about, but it's only the person that's going through what they're going mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. that will understand. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then um, I remember one of my friend's sister, um, she, she's older than us, and she was one that was actually very rooted in, um, in, um, in Celebration Church. And she's the one that actually said, you know what, you must actually uh, go for walking free, I think. And then um, she was working at this job. Then she then said, Lina, actually, you must come and join me at this um, organization that I'm working at. Mm -hmm. It was a small company, so I joined that organization. Mm -hmm. Not for, for long, maybe for, for just um, four months, and then I found a job mm -hmm. that I thought was very lucrative. But you know what? The grass is not always green, mm -hmm. greener on the other side. But I, I believe it was the path that God had laid up for me. Mm -hmm. I remember it was my cousin who was in HR who said, Lena, there's this opportunity. Are you interested? And it actually sounded good. But to be honest, when I went into that job after three, four months, I didn't love that job. I would wake up and I'm thinking, oh God, I'm going to that job. <laughs> but God has got a way of doing things. I remember uh, after the probation, this honor, this guy, he says, no, you haven't um, passed your probation. Mm -hmm. As much as I'd lost the job, I felt relieved. Have you ever felt relieved? Oh, wow. You, you don't normally feel relieved when you're lost, but I felt relieved. Mm -hmm. And then I remember on the Monday morning when I was supposed to, to meet up with some, a guy from that workplace, like a service provider, he called me. He then said, Lena, 
I just wanted to check on the meeting that we're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And I then say to him, you know what, Tony, my employer then, fired me. Mm -hmm. Then he says, oh, don't worry about Tony. He always fires people. Mm -hmm. But in any case, I've got a friend who's looking for a developer. Wow. Would you be interested? And then I thought to myself, I've never, for those that know IT, Development work is not work that you just decide, I'm, I'm being a developer. Mm -hmm. You have to grow yourself into that um, mm -hmm. profession. Mm -hmm. Then I said, you know what? I don't have development skills. Then he said, don't worry. Just call him. He can either give you a project management job or anything. Call him. And Tony had fired me on a, on a Friday, right? Mm -hmm. And it was month end. But an important aspect that I need to even minister to, to people, and uh, for those that know me, I've said this story many times. I had just started tithing at church, mm -hmm. right? Because we were being taught about tithing mm -hmm. and the importance of tithing. Mm -hmm. It's because it's God's money anyway. Mm -hmm. Whether you give it to him or not, it belongs to him. And I remember that specific weekend, I struggled with whether I had to give to God or not, considering that I'd lost a job. Mm. But at the end of it all, I said, you know what, God, it belongs to you anyway. And I can tell you that was the best decision that I made on that weekend. Wow. Because it is on the very same Monday that I received a call from this guy, now telling me, call my friend for a development job. Then I said, no. Then he says, no, call him, he'll give you a job. Guess what, I went to see this guy. He said, no, I'll make you a project manager. Come and start working for me. And this is how I started working for that guy. I worked for him for a year, but because that was in 2007, mm -hmm. eight, mm -hmm. things were not, um, that's so when you saw good in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, but I started so hard, but not to just get this, not to leave this life. I remember I used to earn an equivalent of 100 US dollars. Mm -hmm. He used to give us 100 US dollars. I would change $10 every week for transport, transport $10. And then by the end of the month, I'll probably be left with $40. And that's what I started saving to then save up for what they used to call traveler's checks. Mm -hmm. Then they needed $300 equivalent, $300 equivalent for, for me to get a visa to come to South Africa. Mm -hmm. And from that $40 saving every month, I managed to save $300 for my traveler's checks to travel to South Africa. Mm -hmm. And fast forward, I ended up being in South Africa in 2008. And just- Did you know some people in South Africa? Why South Africa of all places? To be honest, I, I remember I had um, a friend, my, my, my doctor friend, she grew up in a, well, uh, in a privileged family Mm -hmm. And she used to travel to South Africa for shopping. So for me, it was the next uh, best country to, to come to. to. Go to. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that's how I made the decision. But also at that point in time, a lot of professionals, that's when South African government had offered uh, critical skills uh, permits mm -hmm. uh, to foreigners, especially the Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. So it was a mix of things. It was that, that the opportunities were also in South Africa at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So I made plans to actually come to South Africa. Wow, 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 what a journey. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, Lina, I, I know come 2020, yes. you are a high flyer, you are having a good time in South Africa, you are established in South Africa, things are moving on. Well, can you, what do you want to tell us about 2020 to where we are today? So 2020, I think, started off well for mm -hmm. everyone, we, as we all know. And then things um, took a turn when COVID came, right? Um, and I was at an organization um, that I was working at, a consulting house, a well-known consulting house. But one thing that I can say is when I joined that organization, um, three years um, before 2020, that's in 2017, right? There were things that I struggled with in that uh, work environment. Mm -hmm. um, it's very competitive, 
Mm -hmm. I like competition, but I don't like unhealthy competition. Uh, I like to grow, but I thought this environment was a backstabbing environment, and I don't strive. I, I don't thrive in those environments. Mm -hmm. So I struggled in, in in that environment. I had from year to year. I was told you're not good enough. And then I thought to myself, for me to be where I am and to be told you're not good enough, mm -hmm. and each year I never got any increment because you're being told you're not good enough. And generally I'm a very confident uh, person. I believe in my skills, I believe in, in my dreams. But I think at some point in time I started thinking maybe there's something that's Wrong with that's me. wrong that I need mm. to really change in my life and I remember when Dr. Marconi then announced that um, if anyone needs prayer in their workplace I was one of those first people to raise my hand mm. because I definitely needed, needed prayer. prayer in that and I remember yeah. you and Dr. Marconi came and we prayed in one of the boardrooms and you know what I thank God for you at that moment in time for you coming into my life even last year with all the things that happened last year. So then I thought from those prayers like things were going to turn around, mm -hmm. yes. But guess what, when COVID came then they started talking about um, what they call mutual separation agreements. But they are, it, it, it's, it's a softer way of, it's, it's, it's a retrenchment mm -hmm. because they lost work from their clients. Mm -hmm. So they started to, having those discussions. And um, it was at that point in time that um, my manager then, we also called, uh, referred to as a career counselor, called me. And you know the day that he called me, um, just relating it back to my family, last year my father fell ill. Mm -hmm. And it was at a time when I wasn't really um, talking to him. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, there was this um, thing that kept saying, you need to speak to him. And I remember sending him a message. And then he was so happy that I had sent him a message. And I actually, I actually sent him money. Mm -hmm. And then he was so happy, and then he responded. And then, I think a month later, he fell ill. Mm -hmm. And um, when he fell ill, my sister called me, he's not well. And then we spoke about what then should we do as family, and obviously we um, contributed some bit of money, because, but because of the religion that he followed, he wouldn't go to hospital. Mm. So eventually he passed on. Oh, so sorry about that. Yes, so I think it was in that week, um, it was actually in that week after his death, I think the second day that I received then this call from my manager saying, Lina, things are not looking well at work. I'm like, what's going on? Then he says, I'm going into this meeting where they're discussing um, mutual separation agreements and your name has been put forward. Then I said, okay, so what do you think I should do? He says, okay, let's just chat about how I can go in and defend your position. Mm -hmm. And we chatted a bit and then he went into the meeting he came out of the meeting. I don't know if we spoke on that day or it was a few days later, but it was in that week where so much was happening mm -hmm. and I had lost my dad, whom that I wasn't close with, but also I was dealing with, the, with my emotions to say, am I supposed to feel really sad? I've lost my dad, but we didn't have a really good relationship. So I was also struggling with those feelings mm -hmm. and then this work issue then got presented to me. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I then said, you know what, God, if I need to be at that job, you will keep it for me. But if I need to move on somewhere else, then you will do what's necessary. I was at the point where I surrendered it to God. And I thought, if all of this is happening all at once, then surely God knew mm -hmm. and he has a plan. And let that uh, plan unveil itself. So fast forward, I think that was July, August, then these uh, conversations are uh, advanced 
And then I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll accept this um, mutual separation agreement. They explained the terms of the separation and I agreed. I said, okay, God, I'm letting go. Mm -hmm. I was there for three years. There were things that I was not happy with. I think this is a time to go. And I trusted God. Wow. And um, during that time, um, one thing that I learned was to trust God even more. Mm -hmm. You know when you've trusted God, you think, you know I trust God. But when um, a certain issue um, comes, an even greater challenge, mm -hmm. you learn to even trust God even more. Mm -hmm. So I learned to trust God even more. Um, I let go of the job, and then whilst I'm thinking now, what, what do, I do, do I do? I do? Can we just pause there a little? Um, I remember when your dad passed, and we came to, to see you. I remember you having these mix, mixed emotions and feeling, okay, I've lost a dad, and yet the pain was just too much. I think you were now taking everything from the beginning. You know, at times we kind of numb our emotions because we just want to go through life. But here a bomb is dropped because your dad is gone. And if there was meant to be a conversation, probably now because he's gone, there's no conversation taking place. And just listening to you, there's one thing I learned from your own experience to say, despite what may have happened in life, a parent remains a parent. And the fact that though you may not have had a very good relationship, there was respect and honor, and the fact that you could even extend a hand in terms of giving him money or whatever was necessary, for that I salute you. Many a times as children, we may go through life and um, Things happen, and as a child, you may feel, I do not deserve this, and I'm not part of whatever happened between my parents. But one thing I know is that as long as we honor our parents, as, on, as long as we respect them, God is faithful. He will always be by our side. The good thing is God does not die. So we remain with the Father even when our uh, natural or biological father passes on. And that being said, Lina, um, you then lose a job as well. You know, they may term it whatever they want. Like you said, it was a retrenchment. And you are thinking, okay, where do I go from here? What do I do next? But I think against all odds, God turns around the situation. The fact that you remained faithful and you... There's something that you said, you said, I trusted you more. How can you trust a God who sees you losing a job? A God who sees you or allows your dead to, to pass on and you continue to trust him. Please help somebody who is saying, I'm hearing what you are saying because probably you are not in the situation that I am right now. Maybe it's about a marriage. Somebody is saying, how can I continue to trust and believe God? when I've lost a child, when I'm losing my husband or losing a wife, when things around me seem to be crumbling, how can you keep the faith alive? Yes, so keeping the faith alive, it's not easy. I don't want to like, when I even refer to my dad's issue, mm -hmm. it's not like every day I woke up and I'll do the right thing. All right. Uh, there were times when I feel like I have to do the right thing. And like I said, I had not spoken to him mm -hmm. for months before he, him passing on. It's because a part of me was saying, you are a father who never raised me, right? Mm -hmm. But you've got these expectations of me that at times I cannot achieve. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. How about just having a normal conversation, right? Mm -hmm. But because God has seen these things, and when you are working with God, like the theme, this, the, the word this year is hearing from God. Mm -hmm. God was speaking at that point in time. And he was speaking, I remember 
one of my friends, one of my very close friends, she kept on saying, and I was actually getting irritable about it. She kept on saying when I wasn't speaking to my father, Lena, my father was called Inos. Why don't you talk to Inos uh, about, you know, I think, I don't know if it's a cultural thing where then if your father is not raised a child, they must come to the mother's family mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. apologize and, and pay something. And, pay something. Mm -hmm. and then she kept on saying, why don't you talk to Inos to do that whole procedure? And I kept saying, I've spoken to him. It's now up to him to do it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm tired of pushing. Mm -hmm. And she kept on saying it. Until then, I had to send him a message. So that was God speaking through my friend. Mm. But I didn't feel like talking to him. Mm. But then I thank God that I actually had God and I obeyed God. So mm. one of the things that will keep you going is inquiring of the Lord, mm. hearing from God. Mm. It's just to take a pause and say, God, in this situation, in this mess that I am in, what are you really saying? Because I know you're here. So what are you saying? What is it that I must wake up and do? At times, it's not easy. I don't want to lie. But it's, it has to be intentional. It's something that you have to do, wake up and say, God, today I'm faced with this issue. Mm -hmm. What is it? What are those words that I must say, that I must speak to that person? Can I hear from you? So that was the one thing that I intentionally then did. And I remember just in the same month that I'm being told about this developments at work that my father died, this agent, the recruiter, then phones me to say, Lina, there's this role um, at Standard Bank. Will you be interested in this role? I saw your, your, your CV and LinkedIn and everything. And I say to him, yes, I'll be interested in that role. Mm -hmm. So this recruiter started this process. Mm -hmm. So every, this is where I see God was putting together this puzzle. Mm -hmm. He knew I was going to lose this job. Mm -hmm. He was already planning that um, this job uh, would be in the pipeline through a recruiter. He knew my father would pass on. He was speaking through my friend to say, tell your friend to speak to their father. I would have regretted if I had not had a conversation with him. If, right. I, if I had woken up one mm -hmm. day and just be told, your father has passed on. Mm -hmm. But I was, I know at that point in time, I would intentionally wake up and say, God, speak to me mm -hmm. concerning this, this specific issue. Wow, 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 wow. That's powerful. If I could speak to fathers out there, Probably something like what has happened to Lina also happened to you. You don't have a relationship with your child. I encourage you to engage. You know, we need to create memories. And those memories have to be positive. So I challenge every dad out there, whether you're living with your child or not living with your child, just make sure you reach out to your children. If you are a mother raising your children single-handedly, I also encourage you to find a male um, relatives that can help you in bringing up the children. You know, we always need a balanced child when they grow up. In other words, find relatives, find, uh, find, friend, find a couple that you may entrust to help you raise your children. Thank you, Lina, for sharing your life story and the fact that you were going through all this, but yet you kept the faith. That's quite a challenge. You know, God, as we have been talking about, doing our work against all odds, being able to make it in life because God remains faithful to his word. You know, God is a covenant-keeping God. He says, my covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my mouth. So when God promises something, his promises are yes and amen. All we need to do is to trust him. How he is going to navigate um, to have our life straightened or to solve any problem in our life, it is up to him. 
But many a times the, the thing that happens is we try also to manage God, to say, why don't you take this direction? At times we go through painful paths, but God is never taken by surprise. If only we knew that nothing takes God by surprise, then we will not panic about our lives. But unfortunately, at times the flesh takes over when we panic and we are anxious. The word of God even tells us, do not be anxious for anything. You know, if you can take care of the birds of the air, if you can count the hairs of our head, they are counted and known. How much more us as the children of God? You know, God is just so amazing. You know, I have a friend Doug, in, my, in Doug Mahia. One of the things that he has taught me is that God is not in the habit of mis mismanaging our lives. And for that, I can say to people, you know what, God is not mismanaging our lives. He is in control. He is leading our path. We go through, you know, we are, we are not there to stay. We go through the shadow. We go through the shadow or even through the valley. But he is there with us. He is Jehovah Shammah. He continues to be with us. Yeah. And, Lina, one other thing just before we end this discussion. I remember you being a professional, degreed and having a good job. You are not just satisfied by just being Lina, the educated, the employed, and you know, Lina who is doing her life and happy. But because of your upbringing, you were taught to use your hands, to be able to use your mind, and the gift of God upon your life. What else do you do in terms of making a living? Thank you, Pastor, uh, for the compliments. I would say then in 2020, mm -hmm. amidst all the chaos, this is when I birthed uh, one of my dreams, mm -hmm. a salon business. So for so long, I've always wanted to have an image business, mm -hmm. whether is it um, dressing and style business or is it a hair salon mm -hmm. business. So I used to, to go to China, I used to source hair extensions, and I used to sell from my boots. And then COVID happened, I couldn't travel. Mm -hmm. And I actually wanted, for so long, I wanted to expand my business. And so be it, last year, when I was now retrenched, I decided, what am I gonna do with my time? And one of the things that I then decided was to pursue that dream that I've always had, looking for a space for my salon. Mm -hmm. And I remember trying other malls. I was declined. Uh, because they, they had their special tenants. Mm. And um, then last year, when I was retrained, then I got um, a package that we had agreed on. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know what, so I've got this amount of money. I need to invest it in something that's tangible. Mm -hmm. And this is how then in those months that I was unemployed, I started uh, making plans about uh, this business. And I remember now where my salon is, it was one of those um, uh, malls that I never considered because it was so pricey. Mm -hmm. But because of COVID, they actually reduced their, their rentals. Mm -hmm. And I saw this as an opportunity to actually venture in what I've always dreamt about. And I used my package to invest in that. And through that time, I was actually out of work for two months, hey? Mm -hmm. And that was when this opportunity from Standard Bank for came. a new job came as well. Mm -hmm. But it actually came from a colleague that I worked with in my previous job. Wow. It was no longer through the recruiter. So at that point in time, I now had these two opportunities from Standard Bank, mm -hmm. but from different areas. Sources, yeah. Yes, this is when I knew God, I was convinced God was at work. How is it possible? that two opportunities would actually come out of the same. Now my dis dilemma was, which one do I take? Wow. 
Which one do I? You know, <laughs> when God comes through, He comes to show off. You are out of work. You don't know what to do. But one thing I like about it is that even when we were out of work, you did not stop dreaming. Many a times when we go through challenges, we stop dreaming because we think that's the end of life. But when God has given you a vision, that vision should always come to pass. Let's trust God irrespective of where we find ourselves. Like we said, God is not taken by surprise. So he can actually give you those two months as a break for you to rethink and reconsider that same dream that you have had. And well done, I visited your place and it's, I was wowed when I came to your salon to say, wow. You know, professionals getting into other businesses, you know, it also speaks to where we are in life. We cannot just uh, say because I'm employed or because I'm not employed, therefore I can't do anything. Let's believe God and trust God with the vision, with the dreams that he has given us. I believe every dream that God has given us, he, it will come to pass. Look at Joseph. You know, you end up in a pit and you end up being sold. And I don't believe that when he was being sold, he thought of anything becoming of that dream. But look at God. He becomes the second in command. So that's how God works. When we look at the Bible, it reflects even on our lives to say, wow, Joseph felt that when his brothers betrayed him and sold him and they even wanted to kill him, but the dream could never die. And how God then orchestrate things. You are in prison. He is causing people to dream and for you, for you to be able to interpret. The word of God says a man's gift creates room for you, for him, so that he is able to stand before great men, to stand before men of influence. So your gifting, Lena, creates room. It has created room for you, whether in your own business or in, in your profession. It is the gifting of God that is upon your life that creates room for you. But it's not good enough just to have a gift with no dream. So as we continue to nurture the gift of God upon our lives, let us continue to dream and make sure that every dream that we have comes to pass. I will take this moment, Lena, just for you to look into the camera and minister to somebody who feels probably because of, because these days we, everybody is referring to COVID and saying, oh, when COVID hit, this is what happened to me. When COVID hit, this is what happened to me. See where I am today. I can't do anything. But I want you to minister to somebody to say, against all odds, God is able to pick you up and out of that dust or the Mary clay, something good is being birthed. Over to you. Thank you. I just want to encourage someone who is um, feeling discouraged. Um, there is a word that was spoken um, last year that actually ministered to me that said, um, I remember when we were going through these retrenchments, my other friend at another uh, company, she was also going through the same issues, but it was after I had gone through it. And I, I, I told her and I encouraged her to say, you know what, people will tell you, you know, you need to know people. And that word said, you need to know God that knows people. Mm. If you know where you where, 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 who is your source? Your source is not the employer. Your source is God. Mm. So it doesn't matter whether you move from one employer to the other, whether you're out of a job or you're in a job. I know it's a difficult situation trying to figure out uh, whether I'll have enough money at the end of the month, whether I'll be able to pay the bills. But most of the times we focus on the wrong things. We focus on those bills. Our focus should be on God, who is the creator, who is the provider of everything that we require. And we lose peace. Even the word of God says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, 
make your needs be known to God. Mm -hmm. I think that's where our mind should be focusing on, making our needs be known to God by prayer and supplication mm -hmm. and not on being anxious and not on the bills that will come in next month. We are in the COVID era. We don't even know when COVID will end. So are we gonna be in the pit for that long? Because mm -hmm. we do not know what the future holds. Mm -hmm. But guess what? God knows what the future holds. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who will direct your path. This is why I want to encourage someone to say, don't focus on the things that are happening around you. They will drain you. They will, and what the enemy wants, the one thing that I also learned is when you're going through um, those challenges, he wants to discourage you. He wants you to feel helpless. But you know how you can defeat the enemy. When, you, when he thinks you're going to feel helpless, wake up and praise God. Worship God. Don't make yourself, don't feel pity for yourself to say, okay, so what's going to happen to me? I remember there were friends that I never told um, what was going on with me. It's because you know the ways that they'll speak back to you. Mm -hmm. They will discourage you even further. And I didn't want to be in that space. Mm -hmm. And even when I wanted to open the salon, I think there were friends that said, you know, this is a huge risk considering that you're out of a job. But I knew the God that I had spoken to mm -hmm. and the things that I had um, been promised by God. This had been a dream for so many years and the opportunity had only come now in the past three, four years, I think I've been looking for premises and it never materialized. Only now in COVID, when um, most people, our businesses are moving out, that's when the opportunity presented itself. And this is God. This is God. This is why you need to focus on God. And I, I, I'm so amazed by God how when you obey him, when you listen to him, he will show you eventually that this is what I was trying to do. One of my former workmates, at my previous job, um, he was a manager. He was actually a, 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 my manager at, a, at the project that I last did. And we were doing it for a client, Standard Bank. Mm. And um, unfortunately, he was one of the people that had given bad feedback about me. But guess what? Just two weeks ago, he randomly walked into my salon. Mm. And normally, I'm not at the salon. And I heard him speak asking for me. And then I turned and I had to speak to him nicely. I had to forget the things that had happened to us. Guess what? Now I'm the client. I had to tell him, I'm now at the client. I'm now at Standard Bank and you are the vendor, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. I said it in a nice manner. But for me, it was God showing me the victories, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You know, God now reveals this thing. And I had to ask him, what are you doing in the mall? He says, no, we just came to get pizza. And there he was. But when I left that organization, I thought i would never speak to him again. So these are the things, when the, what the devil expects you to do, don't do those things. Mm. There are things mm. that your flesh will always tell you, you have to react this way. And the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Yeah. Yes. So I think for me, those are my parting words to say, trust in God, inquire of the Lord, surrender to God. Thank you so much, Lina. Viewers, thank you for spending this time with us to, uh, this, uh, today. What I want us to do is just to pray, to pray that the Lord takes you out from where you are right now. I think many think you are stuck and you can never make it, but just hearing from Lina, just from her life, which she compressed you know, in the few minutes that we have had, just to show us that God is leading us all the way. We may not know, we know in part actually, but God will manifest and reveal everything as we go, as long as we trust him. Father, this afternoon, I just want to thank you because you are our God. We thank you because you are a faithful God. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much and you continue to do great and mighty things in our lives. I pray for my sisters and my, uh, and my brothers and every viewer right now who are in a situation where they feel they cannot do it anymore. They can't proceed. They can't 
think they can't progress, I speak, Lord, that you are indeed God. And being God, you are able to make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, I pray that as we continue to trust in you, Lord, you are able, Lord God, to do great and mighty things in our lives. Even as Lina has shared about her life story, as we have seen you moving here from glory to glory, we thank you that you are the same God who was there yesterday, today, and forever. And we say, Father, work within our lives and bring healing where there is hurt. Bring healing where we feel the injustices of this life. Bring healing where we feel suffocating and being and subdued by the enemy. I pray in the name of Jesus that you are delivering us from the hand of the wicked one, that you are releasing us, Father, into our area of influence. You are releasing us into our destiny. We choose to trust you with our lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, some have put their trust in horses and chariots, but we choose to trust in you, O oh God, because you are faithful. Lord, we continue to count on what you can do for us. We continue to trust you because we know, Father, even when we go through life uh, difficulties, we know you can uh, bring us out from the miry clay, you can deliver us from the lion's den, you can continue to deliver us in everything that we do. Father, I pray for those that are looking for jobs, those that whose dreams seem to be dying. Father, I pray that you sharpen their minds, you sharpen their dreams, you sharpen their appetite to do the things that you have called them to do. Lord, you are faithful, and we know you continue to protect us, you continue to do things in our lives, and we know, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you redeem everything that the enemy has meant for evil. Thank you for covering us, Thank you for helping us. Thank you for going with us. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. As we celebrate life and as we celebrate your goodness, Father, we declare together with David and say, we shall not die, but we will live to declare the works of the Lord. Father, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have any prayer requests, please just uh, send your details and our team will get hold of you. Lina, thank you so much. It has been, I'm inspired just to, you know they say dynamite comes in small packages and I have seen such a powerful woman of God, such a person that is so determined and committed in everything that you do. As you continue to trust God, may he continue to open more doors for you that no man can open. And when he does shut doors, I pray that as you have always been sensitive to the Spirit of God, you will know that this is a shut door and you don't have to open it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you to Celebration Ministry for giving me this opportunity to share my story. Thank you.